So there's Caroline going to do the scan, and there's Dr. Blees, who is oh, looking at okay. nice scan. The scan is starting now. I'll get some music on for you. starting and I'm watching you at all times through the window. Here we go. Try your best to keep very, very still. Sounds like whale noise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, what it's doing at the moment is it's just sending out um, short little bursts of radio energy to be able to build up the map that we use then to set up the proper scanning protocol. So it'll make lots of these sorts of you know, pops and bangs whilst it's getting itself ready. And then Caroline will have what we call the scout views to be able to set up the, the full scan protocol. So okay. a bit of time taken up with this. Okay. That's noisy, isn't it? But um, Fiona's wearing earplugs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the thing about this machine is that noise from an MRI scanner is directly proportional to the field strength. So the stronger the magnet, the louder the noise. Most hospital magnets have a field strength that we measure in um, a scale called Tesla, and they're 1.5 Tesla. This machine is 0.5, which means it's three times as quiet as an ordinary scanner, even though it still makes a sound, it's nothing like what you get out of a conventional tube magnet. Ah, there's our scout view. Yep. <clears throat> so with this image now, I'm just checking that I've got the patient in the right position. If I need to make any alterations, I'll <coughs> let the patient know over the intercom and then just alter the table height or in and out of the, the field. Okay, first main scan is about to run now. This scan will take just over five minutes. You're doing wonderfully so far, so just keep everything nice and still. Here we go again. So once you set up the protocol, the system will give out an indication of how long it's going to take to run. And the thing is, as a radio you have to be truthful, because yes. some patients will actually count. Oh gosh! <laughs> so if you say it's only going to be five minutes, then it's seven minutes. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. If we had a patient who was very, very anxious, we do have um, quite fast sequences in the scanner as well. So we'll just use our yes. discretion, judge the patient, even if we do a fast scan to start, build their confidence. And then once they calm down, you can normally tell with the, the breathing, their mannerism. So that's why yes. even though I'm talking to you, I'm watching them through the window all yeah. times as well. But because you, you'll notice that alteration in um, body language. Yeah. Um, and then we'll sort of build up to the faster scan. So we'll know which ones of these sequences are the five minutes, the three minutes. So we'll just edge our bets. We also know which scans are more important for the radiologist to see. So we will choose, well, I need this sequence and I need that sequence. And then if the patient does decide it's too much for them, they can, you know, they can call it a day. Great. So we look at lots of different factors based on the patient, based on the clinical information we have. And then we'll tailor the scan to the patient as well as much as we can.
I'm trying to learn the different noises for the different sequences. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do make a very different kind of noise. And in fact, I remember there was a competition a few years ago. People would use the sound of an MRI scanner and chop it up and play tunes with it. So <laughs> yeah. you, you could program the MRI scanner to play a tune. Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> One. I think I put it on our Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah. Smoke on the water. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, uh, the physics students, when they have idle hands doing metal physics, they can sit and tune up a scanner. Yeah. Yeah. But you're right, they have a very um, different kind of noise, and it's important that, you know, as Caroline is doing, you know, in that space you've got between when the sequences are running, you let the patient know what's coming next. Yeah. And some sequences will be louder than others, so if you let them know, they won't jump. And that's always a bit of a problem when patients jump. <laughs> Even from a point of view of pain as well, when you're in a conventional MRI scanner, you haven't got the luxury of being able to move. Yeah. But in this scanner, if I know somebody's in a lot of pain and then I get the first image up and I can see they've got a horrendous disc, I'll say to them, if you need to lift that left leg up and down, do it. You know, Great. work with your own body. You know what it feels like. You <coughs> work yeah. with it yourself. And then they say, well, I go into a normal scan and they say I must move a muscle and then they're just going to tense up. Yeah. So if you say, breathe normally, swallow normally, yeah. you know, in between each scan, don't wait for me to say mm. anything. Just move that leg, mm. just move that arm and it makes all the difference to yeah. them Especially with people with brachalgia, we find that because we can prop the back of the scanner up for C-spines as well. And I always put a little pad in their elbows and they look at you oddly. I said, well, you, you, like, you look like you're doing an arm chair now. Mm. And they sort of you know, say, oh, yeah, so much better. Because if you try and lie sit down, <coughs> you normally do this, and then that's pulling, and then they yes. say, I'm in too much pain. Got know, it. Even if you put them on a prop. Yeah. But um, just by putting a little pad in either side, it makes all the difference. That's great. And sometimes it will feel comfortable for me. And I said, well, when I've been in there, and they said, mm. oh, you've been in there. Said, can, yeah, you, can, you put your, there. can you put your arms above your head for um, a neck scan? Was that a struggle with the coil? Yeah, because you, you'd catch the Right, the arm so it's getting up into yeah, that position yeah, instead. Yeah. That's it's really nice. It's lying down and being forced backwards. So we always put a prop on the back of the bed and give them pads. Got it. But yeah. this, this kind of, you know, working with the patient is so important for yeah. the first principle of actually getting them to have their scan. But secondly, yeah. because of what we've got here, the ability to sort of add the gravity, sometimes you have to do an awful lot of extra scanning to find the pathology. And I put a case up on here that might show that if you're interested. Great. So this is someone, this is what you get out of a normal scanner. This is someone where they wondered if there was anything pressing on the spinal cord, which is this grey stripe running down here. Mm -hmm. And this is what we did on the lying down study. Mm -hmm. So this is what you'll get out of an ordinary scanner. And at that point, it's the end of the game. There's nothing mm -hmm. more to do. Mm -hmm. But the spinal canal is looking normal and the cord is not being pinched. Mm -hmm. So then we stood the patient up mm -hmm. and we looked to see if there was any change when we stood them up. Maybe yes. these disbulges are a little bit more prominent, but mm. still the cord is not being very mm. badly pinched. No. Then we did the scan again with them bending their neck forward, so you can see how the uh, spine is curving. Yes. So they're now bending, but again, none of these disbulges are coming out to pinch the nerve. So by now we've done quite a lot of extra scanning, and mm. final scan is this one where they're now stretching their head backwards, and if we look at this space here, mm. we'll see that finally the what mm. we call the frame and magnum, mm. the hole where the where the spinal cord comes out from the brain into the neck, suddenly narrows in that position only. Gosh. There's no space there anymore. The cord is being pinched between the front and the back of the yes. spinal canal, the frame and magnum. So that's what caught it. Here you can see this white signal mm. here is fluid. Mm -hmm. So we know there's an open space there. We see the open space there. Mm. And in the normal one, we see it. So it's only when we got to the final version that that fluid at the back was disappeared. In other words, it's being squeezed out because the space has got narrow. Thank you.